So today let's try to explore this intelligent electric soldering iron donated by Fenirsi. So big thanks for the donation and there will be a link in the description and now let's take a look at it. Here's the box with the iron. It's 65 watt gallium nitrate, USB power supply or charger, some cables and five different tapes and this tool to clean the tape I guess. But now of course let's try to open it and see it. And that's it. Here is the manual, which is also in English, and the soldering iron with another tip here, and the cover for it. So let's try to power it. Here is a USB-C port and also a USB-C port here, and a thick high power cable for it. Let's try to plug it in and test it. There is also this cable to power it from something else, I guess. And of course nobody reads the manuals, so that's why some instructions are on the box. You have to unscrew this, put the tip in and screw it back. So I guess I'm supposed to do this, this and this. And that's it. But let's take a very quick look at the manual anyway. It seems to be in Chinese, I guess. Here it's in English, Russian, whatever that is. And here the Chinese version of it starts. Here's the English one. The operating voltage is from 9 to 20 volts. 65 watts maximum. Here is an interesting table showing the voltages 20, 15, 12 and 9 volts. And the operating current and power at these voltages and also the tin melting time or is it the preheat time? Here again the tip installation, working state, sleep state, shutdown state. There is even some child lock settings, a lot of settings. Now let's try to plug it in and see. Says Fenirsi. This is heating. It's cold. Now it's preheating, I guess. And I guess it's getting hot. It says 20 volts. Set 300 degrees Celsius setting. You can set the temperature here in the steps of 10 degrees Celsius from 80 degree all the way to. 420, quite a lot, and it said two buttons simultaneously, and then a long press of the right button enters the setting, the display brightness, a long press of the left one leaves the settings, calibrate, temperature unit, Celsius of course, sleep time, this probably shuts down after some time, 20 minutes, sleep temperature, it might actually reduce the temperature instead of completely shutting down in the sleep mode, I guess. Child lock, I don't need this. Language, English or Chinese. Well, I didn't want to do this. A handheld, left, right. It's probably going to put the display upside down, I guess. Yes, good. Back to right hand, of course. Voltage select. Here it probably negotiates the voltage with the charger. With the rest calibrate rule. It seems if the thermostat has some offset, you can compensate it here. I've set it to the maximum and let's try to use it to desolder components from a board. And it seems to work. Nice. One capacitor here. Desoldered some transistors. Desoldered. And this inductor with thick wires. Maybe I should try a thicker tip for this. And this nut seems to be touchable shortly after turning it off and some random piece of metal to remove it while still hot, of course. Looking at the other five tapes, this thick one can be actually good for desoldering big things, I guess. This knife shaped one is interesting. Some conical shaped tips and 
another slightly smaller knife. This is lead free soldering iron tips. No longer of course. I'm using it for lead solder. Warming up this big tip. It actually might be a good idea to put some solder on the tip before this. This makes much better thermal contact. And Soldering the big inductor. It does actually melt even big blobs of solder, but the thermal transfer might be a bit tricky initially when there is a layer of oxide on it. And of course you can also use it to solder, not just the desolder. Nice. Now let's try for example the knife shaped one. And of course I'm also curious, does it run on a power bank? It seems to start up, I can turn it on. Now it's just 12 volts, not 20. The power bank can't supply more than 12 volts, but it can still heat it to 420 degrees Celsius. And it's still melting solder nicely. And it's quite convenient to have a voltmeter on it. 10 volts. 9 volts. 8 volts. Seven. And the voltage is too low now. Runs at 7.4, shuts down at 7.2. The advantage of this soldering iron is that it doesn't rely just on a mainness voltage, like my soldering gun. It can run on a power bank or lead acid battery or a car battery. Now let's try to do some experiments. When it's still hot, let's try to measure on its contacts. There are two rings and the metal body. Between the rings it shows 26 ohms and it goes down. So is it some NTC thermistor in it? And let's try to measure voltage between the metal body and the ring. There is actually 0.3 volts from the metal body to either of these rings. And this voltage is going down. I guess there is some thermocouple in it. It seems like it's using a thermocouple to sense the temperature and it's using some sort of NTC or actually PTC heating element to heat it. And after it completely cooled down, the thermocouple voltage disappeared almost. And now it's much lower end, probably in the other polarity. And the resistance of the PTC element dropped to just 6 ohms. And the other one is also 6 ohms almost. And the heater element is between these two rings and the thermocouple is between one of them and the metal body. And when the tip is removed it shows I should insert it. And there seems to be contacts in it for the rings. Of course I'm used to using irons just for desoldering and for soldering I'm using a soldering gun. But of course I can try soldering with this one too or I can keep it as an emergency iron, for example when I need to solder something around the car, when I don't have minus voltage. And when you turn it on, this bar indicates it's running at 100% power and then as it warms up the power goes down. And if I set a lower temperature, the power is zero now and it's cooling down until it drops to the set temperature and then it's heating again. And the tip of the iron on a thermal camera and it's set to 150 degrees Celsius. It's quite close. And now it's set to 200 degrees Celsius. Anything higher than this is triggering some protection or warning in the camera. So I'm not going to go any higher than this. So that's it and if you like my videos please consider supporting my channel on Patreon using the thanks button and subscribing and big thanks to all of you who already support me.